Today on the Audio Hotline, I'm going to be reviewing the Coda Stealth. The Coda Stealth is considered an inline microphone preamp that boosts your gain. They often are also called mic activators. But in addition to the review of the Coda Stealth, there will also be a big comparison. That comparison will include a couple mic activators that have the same form factor, such as the SE Dynamite, the Triton Fethead, and the one that doesn't match in build, but I just know that people would be mad if I didn't include it, the Cloud Lifter. So I'll be comparing all of those to the Coda Stealth today. But before we get into that comparison and start talking about the details of the Coda Stealth, first, let's get mic activated. Welcome all audio nerds to the audio hotline. Now just to go over a couple quick details, I wanted to let you know that I'm using the Motu M2 to record this. I'm currently using the Coda Stealth plugged into the Shure SM7B and on the Motu M2, I'm about at 35% gain is all. I do in fact have phantom power engaged since all of these mic activators or inline preamps, whatever you wanna call them, they do require phantom power. Also, there are timestamps down in the description in case you want to navigate through this crazy little kooky video. Or you could like hang out with me. I'd prefer that. Now, as of recording this video, the Coda Stealth isn't out yet. It's going to be coming out in just like a few days though. So by the time you see this, it might already be out. And if you're watching this years later, where have you been? Huh? But when the Stealth does come out, it will be priced at $110. Now for these other mic activators, the Triton Fethead comes in at $90. The SE Dynamite on launch, I believe, was $100. But now I see the price at about $115. Then you got the ultra popular Cloud Lifter. This comes in at about $150. But the Coda Stealth, the SE Dynamite, and the Triton Fethead, the ones that all have the same form factor, they're relatively close in price. And if you do end up liking any of these products, I do have affiliate links down in the description if you want to help the channel out. Before we move on, just real quick, I want to answer one question that I know quite a few people are going to ask because it happens every time I do a mic activator review. No, you cannot plug these into a condenser microphone. Any microphone that requires 48 volts of phantom power to function, you will not be able to use a mic activator with it. But what you can use these for are the inactive dynamic or inactive ribbon microphones that have a really low output. So these mic activators will take the 48 volts of phantom power supplied from your interface or recorder. It'll use that power to supply an extra plus 25 or plus 30 decibels to your signal chain. That way you don't have to crank the gain on your preamp with your interface or recorder. So the mic activator is to get you at a good level and have less noise in your signal. That's basically the overall goal. But now let's go ahead and talk about some of the details of the Coda Stealth. If you decide to purchase the Coda Stealth, what comes with the package is pretty cut and dry. It will come with a little tube shaped package and when you open it, it will come with a little bag for storage. What comes with this is pretty much expected. Every mic activator when you purchase it, it doesn't come with like a lot of accessories. It doesn't come with an extra XLR cable or anything like that. And as you can see right here, much like their form factor, their packaging also looks very similar. I feel like the stealth packaging looks really good. I feel like there's just like a really expensive cologne in here. <laughs> the only other mic activator that comes with anything else is the Triton Fethead. It comes with a little bag, much like the Coda. But the build quality of the stealth feels amazing. And honestly, all of these mic activators feel great. The only issue I really have with the build quality, and it's not much of an issue at all, but I just wish it wasn't so chonky. It's definitely bigger around than the other ones, and it's pretty big in general. So on some mic stands and some mic arms, I could actually see that being a little bit of an issue. The Triton Fethead is definitely the smallest. And actually right here at its thickest point, it's the same width as the SE Dynamite. So if you're looking for something really small, Triton Fethead is definitely it. If you want a big red thing coming out of your microphone, this one, or if you want it to blend in and you don't mind the little bit of extra size, the Stealth is great. Or if you just want to get an extra XLR cable, you could just put this on your desk and use this. I mean, you could do it with all of these as well, but the companies that make the mic activators do recommend that you plug it in directly to the microphone. But one kind of silly thing I do want to mention real quick, this little bag will be the death of me. Fun little fact about this guy, I absolutely hate the texture of stuff like this, like velvet? Is that what that is? I don't know. Ugh. Even worse, cotton balls. Cotton balls. Oh, It's honestly like nails on a chalkboard to me. Just thinking about, so oh, just thinking about someone squeezing a cotton ball and hearing that crunch. I don't want to think about this anymore. Why'd you bring this up? Anyway, let's move on and go ahead and nerd out 
and talk about some specs. According to Coda Music Technologies, the Stealth is a professional inline preamp booster for dynamic and ribbon microphones. The Stealth will provide a gain boost of 28 decibels. This has a frequency response of 20 Hz to 20 kHz, a max output level of 8.3 dBV, an output impedance of 135 ohms, and a 3 milliamp current. Well, now that we've gone through the basics and the specs, let's go ahead and do some testings and some comparisons. Now, with this testing section, I will have all of the information that you need to know about each of these mic activators up on the screen, and I will have each test labeled in the lower third. The first thing I want to do is just show you the quick difference between using the Stealth with the SM7B versus using just the SM7B going directly into the interface. Now here is the sound of the SM7B with the Stealth plugged in going into the Motu M2 at 35% gain. So here's the sound of the Shure SM7B with no Coda Stealth in it, and this is at 75% gain. Now we're going to do a test where I just show you a few different microphones with and without the Coda Stealth. This first example is the Shure SM58, and right now I'm at 25% gain on the Motu M2, and my peaks are hitting negative 12 decibels. That is crazy low, but also this looks crazy long when the Coda Stealth is plugged into it. Now here is the Shure SM58 at 60% gain on the Motu M2, and here's how it sounds. Now let's do a real quick noise floor level test between the two. Now I was assuming that this could be a microphone that would be paired with a mic activator like this. This is the Rode PodMic, it's $100. Currently, I'm set at almost 30% on the Motu M2, and here is how it sounds with the Coda Stealth plugged in. Now here is the sound of the Rode Pod mic with no microphone activator plugged in, and it's at 60% on the Motu M2. Now let's go ahead and do a real quick noise floor level test between the Stealth and no mic activator. Here is the Electro Voice RE20 with the Coda Stealth plugged into it at 28% on the Motu M2. Yes, I know that I've been hand-holding a couple microphones that aren't hand-held microphones, but uh, I'm being lazy, so deal with that. Now we have the Electro Voice RE20 plugged in. It's at about 55% gain on the Motu M2, and here is how it sounds with no microphone activator. But now let's go ahead and check out the noise floor level with the RE20 with and without the Stealth. If you've never watched this channel, one of the tests that I do is a kitty purr test. It might sound weird, but all I do is hold a cat up to the microphone as close as I can. It may sound weird, and it is weird. <laughs> but I was like, hey, I'm not testing a microphone, I can't do the kitty purr test. Pee fingers! But then I was like, hey dumbass, one of the biggest issues with the kitty purr test is how high the noise floor level is. So let's see how much it helps the noise floor level when we do a kitty purr test. Now let's go ahead and jump into the most important part. Let's do the comparison. Kicking the comparison off, we have the Coda Stealth going into the SM7B and going into the Motu M2 at 35% gain. Now the Triton Fethead is plugged into the SM7B going into the Motu M2 at about 35% gain. Now we have the SE Dynamite plugged into the Shure SM7B and it is going to the Motu M2 once again at 35% gain. And now here is the sound of the very popular cloud lifter. It is going into the SM7B and then into the Motu M2 and it's around 40%, just a little bit under 40% gain. Since previously when I was filming this, I forgot to include the microphone with no mic activator. Here it is going into the Motu M2 at 75%. Once again, here is the Coda Stealth. It's supposed to supply plus 28 decibels of clean gain. Here's the sound of the SE Dynamite, and it is supposed to provide plus 28 decibels of clean gain to your signal. Once again, here is just the Shure SM7B, no microphone activator, at 75% gain. Once again, the Triton Fet Head going into the SM7B. The Fet Head is supposed to supply plus 27 decibels of clean gain. Once again, here is the cloud lifter, which is actually supposed to supply plus 25 decibels of clean gain, 
which is the least amount of boosted gain compared to all of these mic activators. And one final time, here is the sound of the Triton Fethead. And one final time, here is the sound of the Cloudlifter. And one final time, here is the sound of the Coda Stealth. One last time, here is the Shure SM7B completely nude. No mic activator. And one final time, here is the sound of the SE Dynamite. Now for the noise floor level test, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna measure and put a speaker a few inches away from the microphone. I'm gonna play an ambient noise and adjust the volume so each of these hit negative 12 decibels. It might not be perfectly scientific or anything, but using a constant ambient sound is a better option than using my voice, which can fluctuate. So that's how I'm gonna set the gain, and then I'm gonna compare the noise floor levels. The Coda Stealth hit negative 12 decibels at 45% gain on the Mo2 M2. The SE Dynamite hit it at 44%. The Triton was the surprise of the bunch. It actually hit it at 40%. So maybe the Triton is actually supplying more gain than it says? The Cloudlifter hit a respectable 48% considering it only supplies plus 25 decibels of clean gain compared to the other ones with 28 and 29. And then with no mic activator, it hit negative 12 decibels at, I kid you not, 69%. I obviously couldn't have planned that. But now that we've gotten our scientific data, let's go ahead and set these mic activators to these percentages and see how the noise floor sounds for each of them. So now we're going to do a real quick test to see which mic activator these cats truly think is the best. Some of these mic activators have been training their whole life for this. As the first kitty walks up, oh, he picks the fethead, takes a sniff of the stealth, maybe give the stealth point two five points for that, and that is one point for the triton fethead. And the second contestant, thinking, thinking, stinking, walks up to the cloud lifter. <laughs> oh, wow. One point for the cloud lifter. Kind of a basic choice. It is the most popular. Here's the third contestant. And, uh, oh, wow. Don't show that booty hole, little girl. <laughs> Don't do that. And the fat head is picked. Oh, wait. She is standing in between both of them, making a statement of undecided. So a half a point for the fat head and a half a point for the stealth. And, oh, wow. That's just... That's just cute. Ho oh, ho ho, you can't be mad about that. Oh, there's a half a point for the SE Dynamite. In fourth place, it is the SE Dynamite with a half a point. In third place, it is the Coda Stealth with 0.75 points. In second, we got the Cloudlifter with one point. And the winner is the Triton Fethead with one and a half points. Now that we've gone through the basics, the specs, we did some tests of the Coda Stealth, and we also did a pretty large comparison. Now that all of that is out of the way, now we can get to my review, my opinion of the Coda Stealth. I'm going to start out talking specifically about the Coda Stealth, and then we'll kind of move on to some other comparison-related stuff. The Coda Stealth is solid. It's a $110 mic activator that looks solid, feels solid. It does its job well. It doesn't affect the tone of the microphone in a bad way. And it is actually the second cheapest amongst all four of these mic activators. Saying that though, I do wish that this came in at $100 or even $90. In my opinion, the microphone activators that have the most notable name is of course the Cloudlifter and the Fethead. Since the build quality and form factor are very similar and they're basically living in the world of the Fethead, I think it would have been better if they were more competitively priced in that $90 area. But I really do like the Coda Stealth. I think it does a good job. I like that it blends in with the cable, even though this does look pretty long and kind of weird. <laughs> there are a few more things that I do want to mention about the Coda Stealth, but they're kind of in comparison to the other products. So let's go ahead and talk about that little battle that we had between these mic activators. First thing I want to say about all these mic activators, most people would be happy with any of these. They're all relatively close in quality. I do think the Cloudlifter is a great product, but it is the most expensive. And I absolutely understand the appeal of these smaller mic activators. It's nice to be able to plug this directly into the microphone and not worry about a second XLR cable.
cable, but there is a little bit of a downside when it comes to plugging it directly into the microphone. One thing I've noticed with these style of mic activators is they tend to be a little bit loose when they're plugged into the microphone. The worst offender is the Coda Stealth for sure. It's pretty loose in the microphone and it worries me a little bit. I don't know if it'll cause problems in the future, maybe it won't, but it's just something to note. The least loose or tightest one is definitely the Triton Fethead. It feels really good when it's plugged into the microphone. But obviously here, the Fethead is the cheapest by like 20 to $25, because it often comes in at 85 or $90. So that leaves the Triton Fethead being the best value. And also it does feel the best when plugged into a microphone. It's the least expensive, the smallest, and it's supplied the most gain. But one thing about the Fethead that can be pretty negative is it sometimes can be hard to find. I feel like recently it's gotten a little bit better and I haven't seen it as like back ordered or out of stock at places. So that's great, but yeah, I've seen it in the past. Now I do feel like I'm copping out here a little bit, but they really are all very good. And it really will come down to personal preference. I know that some people freak out when I talk about appearance when it comes to audio products, but audio and video go hand in hand now. And people care about what their stuff looks like. And I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. So that could be another factor that comes into play and why some people might want to pick the stealth over the SE Dynamite or even the Fethead. But you always could add just like a one to three foot cable in between the microphone and the Dynamite if you prefer that one and you don't like the look of it. I feel like a broken record right now, but just get the one that you liked the most. There is not a serious disadvantage to any of these. They're all good products. None of these like severely affect the tone of the microphone in a detrimental or bad way. But since this is a review for the Coda Stealth, it's time to grade it. The grade that I give the Stealth is a B. Now, like I said, I would have liked to see a little bit lower price, but I still think it's a very good option. Now, thank you all for watching this review of the Coda Stealth and for watching the comparison between the Coda Stealth, the SE Dynamite, the Triton Fethead, and the Cloud Lifter. Now, stay tuned for a lot more reviews, comparisons, other audio-related stuff, and some giveaways coming up. Now, I appreciate each and every one of you for watching this. I truly appreciate everyone that subscribes to this channel. You're great. And I really, really thank all of you that are members of the audio hotline. That is just the coolest. Also, a big thank you to Coda for reaching out to me and sending me the Coda Stealth to try out. I really do appreciate it. But once again, thank you all for watching the audio hotline. I'll see you audio nerds next time. Hey guys, look, it's a mic activator centipede. An inline preamp centipede. Inline centipede. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> so, what we're gonna do right now is a quick test on which mic activator. I'm cupping the mic like a fucking idiot.